Hey there, it's Tank Girl, and this here is the Moto X. But this is not what this video is about, because I want to tell you what I'm really excited about. Sure, the Moto X is a nice phone, and it's a bit of a mid-range phone, and it's more or less pure Android, but really the price wasn't quite there, and I really think the most awesome phone from Motorola this year is this one here. This is the Moto G. It's the Moto X's little brother, sister, whatever you want to call it. And wow, this is unbelievable. So let me explain to you why it is unbelievable. Let's get rid of Moto X here and really talk about Moto G. I love this little phone and I'll tell you why. Because it's like a baby Nexus and that's why. Um, okay, let's where to start. First of all, it's a low-end I mean, supposedly low-end phone, but when you look at the specs, it really isn't. The display is a 4.5-inch IPS panel, 720 by 1280. That's pretty high res. And, and look at it. Look at this. Look at these viewing angles. Look at the quality of the display and this bright light here. It's phenomenal. This is a really, really gorgeous screen, right? So now you got this, you got a quad core Snapdragon 400 on board, you know, one gig of RAM. It comes in two flavors, eight gigs of storage or 16 gigs of storage. And here's the killer. And here's why I think it is an amazing phone for the money. It's $179 unlocked, $179 for eight gigs, $200, well, 199 for 16 gigs, okay? Now, you're gonna say they're gonna cut corners or something, but they didn't really cut corners. You saw the display already. Performance is super snappy. This thing just screams. Um, what else is cool about it? It's small, it's light. It feels great in the hand. It has very much the same industrial design as the Moto X, which felt really fantastic in hand. And, you know, that's pretty much it. $479 you're getting a, a baby Nexus. It's running almost stock Android. There's even a Google Play edition you can buy if you want. Now, I know, I know, there's a couple of things you should be aware of. Number one, no LTE on this phone. So it's 3G, HSPA plus only, caveat mTOR. Now, the other thing is the camera. It's only a five megapixel autofocus camera, no optical image stabilization, single LED flash. It's a pretty low-end camera in this day and age, but it still gets the job done. So let me quickly walk you around some of the, the bits and pieces so you have a feel for things. So here at the top you have the front-facing camera and the earpiece, probably some sensors hidden there. Uh, at the bottom, of course, no buttons, just like a Nexus device. Um, that's basically it for the front. In the back, as I already mentioned, you get a 5 megapixel autofocus camera here with an LED flash, speaker grill, Motorola logo. Now again, this looks a lot like a Moto X. These two phones are so hard to tell apart. The Moto X has a 4.7 inch screen that's AMOLED instead and of course a different processor dual core uh, S4 Pro based uh, with some custom coprocessors baked in. But you know, really um, this is kind of like a, a Moto X Redux in many ways in terms of industrial design. So uh, walking around the edges, you got the uh, headphone jack on top here with a secondary microphone. On the right hand side, you've got the power lock key, the volume rocker, and then you go to the bottom where you'll find the mic USB charge and data port right here. And on the left hand side, there's really nothing. Uh, so you're gonna say, where does the SIM card go? Because on the Moto X, the SIM card goes here on the left hand side. Well, this is what's really truly amazing about this phone is that it has a removable back cover that is kind of counterintuitive kind of because it feels like a unibody design in hand. It's really quite remarkable. So this is it. Uh, this battery is not removable, um, but here, as you can see, is the SIM card slot. There is no micro SD card slot, so that's a drawback, but you know, honestly, Pick the 16 gig version for $200 and most of the time you'll be fine. The other thing to keep in mind is that micro USB on the go is supported here. So you can, you can set that up if you have to. I'm going to put this cover back on. So the other cool thing is you can buy covers in different colors. 
and also there's a cover that has a hinge with the front flap. So basically you have a choice of designs there in terms of what you can get this phone to look like. So in other words, you can get some of that color customization that you get on the Moto X, but you don't, you're not stuck with it forever and you know, it doesn't take time to manufacture and cost money. So again, this is really a brilliant thing. Now let's, let's take a look at it again side by side with the Moto X because, you know, again, I want to show you how hard it is to tell these two apart. I mean, look at this. Really? You know, you can't really tell. I mean, I do this and, you know, there you have it. AMOLED 4.7 inch 720p versus IPS 4.5 inch 720p. A white phone versus a black phone. Now it gets even more dramatic when I flip them over. Which one's which? You can clearly see the Motorola logo, the flash, the camera. You know, how did that happen? How is it possible that there's such a price difference between these two devices? Uh, other than the LT and camera, there's really no major difference. I mean, uh, sure, you're going to say the processors are different, but I mean, for, it's still like there's no way to explain the price. So to me, the takeaway is that the Moto X is an okay phone, but the Moto G is really a tremendous phone for the money. Now, there's a thing to keep in mind. It comes in two versions, 8 and 16 gigabytes, as I mentioned. It also comes in a US 3G band versus uh, European 3G band versions, and that's something to keep in mind as well. So, I was saying this is a mini Nexus, in many ways it really is. You know, here's my Nexus 5, and so let's compare them real quickly. Of course, the size difference on the screen, you know, 720 4.5 inch versus 1080p 5 inch, right? At the same time, you know, um, it's half the price, and that's, that's the crazy part of this, is that you're looking at a phone, this is the 16 gig version for $200, and this is the uh, 32 gig version of the Nexus 5 for $400. So, you know, you, you miss LT, you have a lesser camera, but everything else is pretty much uh, a very similar experience. And so, you know, something to keep in mind if you're shopping for an Android phone and you're on a budget and you can live without LT. So here you go from the back, both have a soft touch black matte finish. Um, and of course the cameras are different, 8 megapixel autofocus with optical image stabilization versus 5 megapixel autofocus. Again, this camera could use some love, but you, you know, you gotta cut corners somewhere. So that's what they look like from the back, and then if you put them on top of each other, as you can see, the Moto G is not that much thicker. I mean, it's a little thicker, but it's not. It's a pretty sexy looking phone. I mean, considering it's got most of the industrial design of the Moto X that a lot of people love. So there you go. So that's, that's kind of my takeaway. And this is why I think the Moto G is a milestone, pardon the pun. I know there was a phone from Moto called the milestone, but really is a milestone in terms of, you know, low end, mid range, whatever you want to call them phones, because it doesn't feel like you're using a low end or mid range phone at all. And yet the price is, is unbeatable. You, you know, I used to recommend the Lumia 620 in that price range because it's a great smartphone for the money, but at this point it's just, this is a no-brainer. Uh, no Android phone made by any other manufacturer in this price point can beat this phone. So, kudos to Motorola for a job well done on the Moto G. I wish I could get as excited about the Moto X. Anyway, um, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and don't forget to read my blog. Uh, that's Tankrow Mobile, tnkgrl.com.